Next feature I'm going to attack is the side door. Now I had hoped that when I neck this top down to a very specific dimension on the print that these bosses would present themselves in a machinable manner. I think you can see that the edge of the boss, the edge of the top rail is just about perfectly suited for where that hole needs to be in these guys right here. That being said, I'm not sure that's exactly going to happen. Now I could put a notch back here and cheat and come down through there, but I just don't think I want to do that. First thing I'm going to do is clean this all up, the door as well, get everything to fit. And it looks like the design intent behind this is to have this door swing open and then lift off. That being said, there is potential for hiding something behind the hinge on the door. So I could replace these bosses with pre-drilled and screw them down and then put the door on and you would not never be able to see it. So I think that's quite possibly the direction I'm going to take, but I don't know that yet. So I'm going to put this in the machine, square this pocket up, strap this baby down, make everything fit, and then I'll decide whether or not I'm going to cut them off and make my own hinges. I hate to do that, but hey, you never know, right? It might look better. Make them out of brass so they really stand out. All right, let's do it. going to use a 1 16th end mill to do this. This is about a 1.5 diameter end mill, and the only reason I'm doing that is to keep the corners relatively sharp. The inside of the window, the inside of the casting is all red. The, uh, did it with a Sharpie marker, and I'm just going to clean up the surfaces and record the values. Go from there. The engagement on the door is very superficial, so that minor not cleaned up area right there is not going to be a problem. As long as the top surface is relatively clean, that's all that matters. And a quick look at the final fit on the door for now. There is play because it does have to swing open, but there's sufficient overlap that you're never going to see the gap. I'm not going to do anything to these bosses at this time. I'm going to get this door to the point where it goes on as intended and just take a look and review my options. But I'm thinking that inserts are going to be placed here instead of these bosses. These bosses just do not come out far enough to accommodate the plans. First step in this process is to bring this door into something that I can trust and dimensionally uh, know where everything is. So I'm gonna take these little gates off the tops of the hinges, make the gap in the middle, and probably make it symmetrical end to end. Let's take a look at the setup.
There are elevated bosses on both sides, so this has got to be gripped this way. Got a nice registration on it. Parallel to the other side, that should give me everything that I need to do exactly what I want to do. Well, let's make some chips. I've marked up the sides of this little door with some red Sharpie marker. I am going to make contact with the sides and move in a given amount to keep the outside of the bosses symmetrical. And I will make each boss the same thickness, and that will be a good place to start. Now to save myself from a little bit of bench time, I'm going to take a corner rounder and break off these back edges. Since that's the pivot direction, these back corners must be round. Using a corner round cutter does not have to be scary. If you know the diameter of the center of the cutter, treat it like a standard size end mill for all of your offsets and the radius should fall in. For instance, if this was a 250 shank and that was an 050 center, well, that would probably be a 100 radius on either side. You would just simply offset the center of this tool, 25 from that surface right there, and the bottom tangent of this cutter should fall right in line. Many of these corner rounds have a, just a little bit of draft on the top and the bottom, so be very careful with the number that you come up with. Stay away a couple of thousands before the initial cut and then have at it. But that's a good trick. Measure the nub at the end of the corner rounder. Treat it like a straight end mill.
And a quick look at the progress so far. The hinges are symmetrical about the outside, but that does not make them symmetrical about the inside. You can see the difference in the top and the bottom. The bottom is almost twice what the top is, but I'm going to go for a visual here when the door is closed. So I want everything to be well balanced. I am going to cut the lugs off the frame. These lugs are coming off. I'm going to blend it in. I'm going to try to rough up the surface so you can't tell what's going on. And then I'm going to put studs in here and split the studs. And that will give me the alignment that I'm looking for here. If this is period correct, then the door is supposed to open halfway and lift off. Well, that's not how my model is going to be because I don't like pieces falling off of my model. Mine are going to be split completely through the center. These will go down in the splits and then the pin will drop in and hold the door on. So I'm going to make these brass. I'm going to make the handle on this brass just for a little bit of contrast, just for, you know, it's my model, so why not? Got a little bit of play in there, which is good because it's got a swing open and closed. The corner round did a nice job. I did take it over on some emery and wiped it this way. Swept it so everything come in nice and clean. I'm going to make a block that this is going to sit into to help dry all, <laughs> dry all the good. You guide the drill down between these two lugs and keep everything straight and centered. So the little plate's the next thing I'll be making. So far, so good. Let's do it. After a little bit of fussing around with some scrap, this is the jig that I've knocked out for the hinge location on the door. It banks on the closing surface of the door, and it gives me a good clean shot at the bosses on the end. Now after coming up with all the numbers from the outside to where the boss starts and the height and the depth and where everything registers yada yada, I'm going to set this up in device, squeezing it on a parallel, drill right down through the outside boss all the way down to the bottom using the center as the guide. You've seen me do that before. I'm going to do it an 062 reamer, about a millimeter and a half diameter. And if all goes well when I'm done, the hinge pin should fit nicely right down the backbone like so all right well it all sounds good on the bench let's get over to the machine set it up and see if uh, it works out i have great confidence and 30 hands
This is also the fixture that will allow me to drill and ream for the handle pivot point by repositioning the fixture that way. I'm going to size this hole to approximately two millimeters, just a little over two millimeters. It's about 80 thousandths of an inch imperial. I will make the shaft of the knob accordingly. Since I do not have a reamer, I'm just going to clean drill it and hope for the best. Well, as much as I would like to see these bosses concentric, I guess that's just not going to happen. It's not a big deal. That's the inside of the component. I'll know it's there, but once the cam goes on, chances are you'll never see it. The knob will go on the outside here, and I'm going to put the split hinges on, like I said before. So the next step in line is to knock these guys off, fit this door on here, and figure out how those hinges are going to be replaced. All right, let's put this guy back in the machine and make these go away. This will be a very delicate operation if I don't want it to stick out like a sore thumb. So I'm going to just dust these down until I can figure out exactly what the surface is doing here. And I may have to adjust this, shim it, bump it, indicate it, whatever. But these need to go away and not leave behind too much of a trace if they were ever there. Let's see how it works out.
All right, quick look pre-blast. There are some low spots behind the protrusions. This is why I stopped short of the actual surface. Go down to the low spot and then you'll be digging in back here. I'm going to trust that this will blast out. I'm going to mask all this stuff off up here so this doesn't really get affected. And then work heavily on this in the blaster. Just give it a couple minutes. I will be back. I have great confidence that will look just fine. Not horrible, but I think I can get it a little bit better. Still some high spots on there. Let's get rid of them. Looks pretty good though. Okay, back and forth a couple of times. I think I've got a surface I am pleased with. You've got to really look hard to see where that was. There's the door. Now we can Fit the door on there. I'll put the new hinges central to where that is, and everything will look just like I want it to. All right, we're getting there. Let's put this thing back in the machine, figure out where the hinges are going to go. Or maybe we'll go to the lathe and make the hinges. Who knows? Stick around. For anyone that's confused as to exactly why I removed those lugs and what I'm up to now, well, here's the door that goes on here in position let's first look at the way this is drilled that hole is pretty dead spot on to the center of that boss now if you take this hinge pin and you project this hinge pin vertically you can see that it crashes into the outer rail here so basically there is no way to drill the provided or the supplied features on the body casting to accept this pin. It's just not going to happen. So the plan is to find out where that pivot point is, both of these, and translate some pocket features to that area and make little insert hinges that will accept the door and allow the door to open. All right, well, and I think I'm going to make them out of brass just for contrast. I had considered and I know some of you guys are saying, well, why don't you do it this way? Well, let me say for a second. I had considered just attaching a large lug in the center, screwing it down, peening it however, and then using one long pin. Now the problem then becomes you can't get the pin in because the pin length is longer than this length right here, right there, and you can't get the pin in. And you probably could stick it in from the bottom, but I don't know about that. I'm just going to make a couple of little horseshoes that come up from the bottom, screw in. And on the inside, I'm going to trust that I have at least two millimeters worth of clearance to anything moving around in there. If I don't, well, then it's not going to end well. So let's put this back in the machine, find the center of this pocket, and start working on these features. Now, the center of the pocket is not the center of the door. That's the other problem. You can see the protrusion on the back of the door is asymmetrical. It's bigger on the bottom than it is on the top. So working from the pocket on the body, I can go symmetrical about the pocket. But when it comes to this guy, that's a whole different animal. Anyway, I got it all figured out in CAD, and I'm going to get up there and punch some holes in this thing, make some little pockets, and then we'll move on to making the hinges. Who would have thought that such a minor detail would be such a pain in the neck? It's always the way it works out, though, right? If you're going to blow a dimension or ruin a part, it's going to be something easy. Let's get over the machine, make some chips. Anytime I'm indicating a surface and I know that the indicator is going to go halfway around on the dial, there's a good chance of jamming the needle where it doesn't want to 
transition to the surface you want to indicate and it'll shift the indicator body. Now having been burned by that several times in the past, I always preload the needle. Watch the dial on the indicator. This needle is not touching the surface I want to indicate. I'm going to bump it and get it above or close. And that way when it transitions down onto the surface, there's no shock to the needle. And you can trust the reading that you get. Right now I'm on the center of that pocket and I can start drilling my holes and milling my small features in these two areas. To confirm that the numbers I've come up with are correct, I'm going to use gauge pins and move to the pocket locations and just visually see if it's over the intersection of the hinge boss on the door and the rod that I have in the holes that I machined. This is not something you should be afraid of because if this door doesn't close, there are 99 different ways to get it to close. There's material that can be removed uh, on the door, on the pocket. You have so many options, you should not be afraid to attempt this. I'm going to switch over to the milling of those small pockets. They're going to be one millimeter deep. And this is an ideal opportunity to shift your digital readout, if you have one, to the incremental mode. That way I have my absolute positioning of both of these holes, but by switching over to incremental right here, all my moves can be symmetrical about that hole without a bunch of different numbers showing up on the digital. Okay, try to keep in mind this is a 1.5 millimeter diameter end mill. This is a four flute carbide. I would rather have a two flute for chip clearance, but I'm only going one millimeter deep. Uh, that's 062 diameter imperial. Let's do it.
Now, for those of you that were paying attention on that last pass, I did the side closest to the camera and the bottom side first. I went back and I re-zeroed here with all the dials going clockwise. So this was a climb cut over and across, and then I repositioned and went back in there, repositioned over it with all the dials going clockwise, and then went the other way, this way and this way. So this would have been a conventional cut. Climb one side, conventional the other side. That way you don't have to worry about backlash. I did have a digital, but I thought it was worthy to do that just to show you. I'm gonna repeat this process here on this side. Don't forget to change over from the absolute, get back down here, and then go back to your incremental. Alrighty, hinge pockets are done. There is only one other feature to do on this, and that is the two holes for the mounting screw that raises and lowers the table. And they're the ones that go on that impossible pad from the last video. I'm going to do that inverted, so I don't need extended tooling to get there. Setting the fixture up is easy. First thing I'm going to do is tram the slot that I put in and call that my X0. Minus 12 and minus 12. So right now the table is oriented to that center slot right there, the big one, which is true to here because it was done with the center line feature on the digital. If you have a hard time measuring how deep this feature is, well, that particular notch right there is strictly to locate the center of the shallow notch. Zero it out, move on to an edge finder and find this surface.
table is now positioned the dimension on the print from this surface in. It's 156, it's about four millimeters. So on the print, it says from the face of the shaper base, this surface right here, these holes that need to go right there are four millimeters in. And you can see you'd need a considerably longer drill than most people would have for that size. So by locating on the fixture, inverted, <coughs> right now when I bring that spindle down, it is going to drill those holes exactly where I want to drill them because the fixture is positioned and the part just sits there and does basically nothing except get the holes. This feature also calls for a counterbore on the underside for the screw heads. So I'm killing two birds with one stone here. Drill the through holes and counterbore all in one setup on location from this side. And a quick look at the completed frame. Concentricity is good. Finishes are good. There's those two holes you saw me put in last down here. You can see how long the drill would have to be in order to get down there and do that. Counterboard from the bottom. Even things that are not being machined, I deburred just in case someone's handling it. You don't want anybody getting cut on your finished parts. Hinge pockets, the hinges will be next, and we'll get the door mounted and see uh, what's what. But that is it. That is the end of the base unit, and we'll move on to the hinges. Somebody suggested dust cutting the tops of these numbers or these letters off to make them stand out. I really like that idea. I had considered that, but any inconsistency in the height of those characters might really bite you. I just might have to venture down that road because I think that would look really sharp. Thanks for the suggestion. Okay, let's go over to the lathe, make the blanks for the hinges.